How's it going guys? Today we're going to go over another leak code question. Today our question is from Amazon and it's called subsets. Alright guys, so today our question is from Amazon. Our problem is called subsets. And our problem description says, given a set of distinct integers nums, return all possible subsets or in other words, the power set. And it tells us as a note that the solution must not contain duplicate subsets. So as our example here tells us, if we're given the numbers one, two, three, we'd want to return this output, right? So it's a list of lists, and our list of lists contains a list of three, a list with one, a list with two, a list with one, two, and three, a list with one and three, a list with two and three, a list with one and two, and then the empty set as well, because that represents the entire power set of that list of numbers. So we're really just generating all these different subsets. And if you actually notice, a pretty easy way to do this is basically just simulating taking or not taking any given number that you're currently on. And so that's how we're gonna go about solving this question. Okay, so we're gonna walk through our array of numbers and at every single number, we're basically going to simulate taking the number and not taking the number. And so if we could do that for every single integer in our nums, then we will successfully uh, create or return the power set. Okay, so how do we do that? I think personally a really easy way to do that is just to do it recursively. Okay, so we can make recursive calls that will basically simulate taking and not taking each number. But first we need to do some boilerplate stuff, right? First we basically need a return value. Then we need our recursive function to actually do the work, populating our return value. And then we just need to return whatever we created for the return value. So let's start doing those steps. So we're first going to need a list of lists of numbers, right? So we could just return from this function. So we're going to say list of list of integer. And again, this represents our subset, so it probably makes sense to call it subsets. We're going to set this equal to a new array list. Okay. And so for those of you guys who know my channel and like my videos and watch them, I always like to do this with like a shell function and then a recursive function. So it's kind of like, you know, we're writing this magical function that will just do the work for us. And then all we have to do is return the result. So we said we're going to make this magical recursive function. It probably makes sense to call it generate subsets, right? Because that's what it's doing. Uh, so we'll call it generate subsets. And obviously we haven't written this yet, but we will. And what do we actually need for this function? Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is an index, right? We need to know when we've actually reached the very end of our numbers and we don't have any numbers to go through. And we've, you know, basically exhausted our whole list. So that's the first thing we need. Um, so we're going to need an integer to represent our index, and it makes sense for it to start at zero, because at first we're going to be at the first or the zeroth number. Okay, great. Now the next thing, and this is kind of a gimme, but we're going to need the numbers that we actually have available, so we know what numbers we can add uh, to any of our subsets that we're creating. The third thing that we're going to need is actually a list to represent our current subset, right, because we need to return a list of lists here. So we're going to send uh, pass this a new array list of integers. And then the last thing we need to do is actually just pass our subsets, right? So every single time we successfully create a subset, we can add it to our list of lists. So we'll say subsets. And now again, assuming that that function worked correctly, all we'll need to do is return our subsets. Great. So now all that's left to do is actually write this recursive function. So let's start doing that. So let's just first write our function declaration. So we're going to say public. Again, this isn't going to return anything because it's just adding to our list of lists. So we're going to say void. It's called generate subsets. And what do we pass? We pass an integer called index. We pass a list, or sorry, we are passing an array of numbers called nums. We're going to pass a uh, list that's going to represent our current subset, right? So list of integer. And it probably makes sense to call this current. And then the last thing we have is a list of lists of integers, and we call that subsets. So list of list of integer. And this is called subsets. All right, great. So now at any iteration of this recursive function, the first thing we want to do is just add whatever our current subset is. So that's super easy. All we have to do is say subsets dot add current. Great. So now once we've added the current subset, now we need to walk through the remainder of the numbers simulating taking and not taking the current number that we're on. So a really easy way to do that is just to have a for loop, right? For whatever index we're on up to the rest of the numbers, 
let's simulate taking and not taking those numbers. So we'll say four int i equals our index, right? Because again, our index is where we are in our numbers currently. Well, i is less than nums.length, because again, we need to walk through all the numbers, i plus plus. So now this is the fun part, right? This is the interesting part. Now we need to simulate taking and not taking each number at the index position. So first, let's just take the number, right? That's really easy. We just add it to our current. So we say current.add, and then we're gonna say nums at i, right? So we're adding to our current list, our current subset, whatever number that we're at. Now that we've taken the number, let's simulate moving on with that number. So again, all we have to do now is just call that recursive function that we made. So we're gonna call generate subsets, and now we're not gonna be on index, we're gonna be on index plus one. We still need the numbers, we still need our current, right? And then we still need our subsets. And also, I just realized we want to add not current, but we want to add a copy of current. So we make sure that we always have uh, the right value of current. So here, I really want to take a copy of current and add it because we're going to be modifying it. So here, I'm adding two subsets, a copy of whatever our current subset is. Because here, you, see, you can see that we're modifying it. Okay, great. So now, once we've actually simulated taking the number, right, we've taken it, now we've moved on to the next call with that number, uh, moving to the next number in nums. Now all we have to do is once that returns, we just have to simulate removing it, right? And so to simulate removing it, let's just actually remove it from current. So we could say current dot remove, and we know it's gonna be the last number we added, so we could just say remove current dot size minus one. Okay, great. So again, just as a quick overview, again, we're making a list of lists to return called subsets. We're going to call a magical recursive function that's actually going to generate our subsets. And then it's going to, you know, in that recursive function, add all the subsets that we create. So once it returns, we just have to return subsets. And then in our re recursive function, we're adding to our list of subsets, whatever our current subset is. And then we're going to walk through the rest of the numbers simulating adding the current number at the ith or the index position, moving forward in the list of numbers because we've taken that number, and then once that recursive function returns, we're gonna simulate removing it. And so once this all finishes, all we have to do is return subsets. And so before we run this code, let's just talk about our runtime. So our runtime here, guys, and this is similar to other problems that we've done in the past on my channel, but basically the runtime is gonna be to the n, okay? n is gonna be the number of numbers we have in nums or the length of nums and two to the end because at every single iteration we're making a choice right take or not take that number so we have two different branches of logic at every uh each recursive step so the runtime is going to be two to the n in terms of space complexity i think the space complexity would be o of n right because as deep as our stack traces or our stack calls can go is going to be the list of numbers right so the deepest that these recursive functions can go is actually however many numbers we have so again, I think the runtime is two to the n, and I think the space complexity is O of n, where n is just the size of numbers or the number of numbers that we have in nums. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right, so let's run this code and make sure that it works. I get the wrong answer, and I think I accidentally put index here, and I want to put i. So let's make sure that it works now, that I said i instead of index. Awesome, it does. So guys, that's how to solve subsets in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.